Hi, this is Ellen at Sisters 3 Farm, and um, today I'm in the dye pots. Um, I have a friend who would like to have her green wool, which was actually kind of on the bright side, to dull down to be more of an antique green. I've already got it wet, so it looks pretty dark already, but um, let's take a look. So this is the green. Oops, I got some red here. This is the green and you can see it's pretty bright. And today I am going to try and dull it down a little bit by using um, a complementary color. So the complementary to green would be red and I'm hoping this will dull it down to an antique black. Um, and what I've been using here is I've got some Cushing dyes using my Cushing dies today. Um, I like using Cushing. Sometimes I use Prochem, but today I wanted to do this. Um, we'll give this a try. So that's that. Um, I've got my die spoons, the Gray's die spoons, which measure things out to be, um, you know, a tablespoon, a half a tablespoon, all down to 128th of a teaspoon. Um, this is not a white pot, but it's the biggest pot that I could find so it takes like a whole yard it easily takes a whole yard of wool so this way I'm not dying a half a yard and then half a yard and trying to match them up and make them exactly perfect um, so this I've got a big kettle of boiling water I had soaked all of the wool um, the night before for um, 24 hours you know overnight it's definitely been over 12 hours. It, it doesn't have to be that long, but I like soaking it overnight and then the next day um, dyeing it. And I soak my wool in, you know, room temperature water and Synthropol. You could also use Joy, Lemon Joy dish soap or even some um, Jet Dry. That works too, but I really like Synthropol. It's made for wool. Um, I also have um, a little jar of salt, which I use to rinse my spoons in after I dye. What it does is it takes all of the extra dye off of your dye spoons and cleans them up so you have nice clean spoons. And then I have citric acid, which sets the color. You can use um, vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I've used that plenty of times. Um, and uh, now we're gonna give it a try because I can hear my kettle starting to simmer, I think. So let's give it a shot. Yep, looks like it's starting to simmer. I'm just gonna move it around a little. All right. We're gonna make sure my dye is stirred really well. I have my formula in one cup of boiling water. I have my pot on high, and we're going to be adding a little bit here and there. Good. I'm just adding a little at a time. I kind of kind of die by eye. It's looking duller already, which is great. Um, all right, it's looking good. We want it to be just tiny, tiny bit spotty too. We want it over dyed and we want a little bit of modeling. So what I'm going to do is let this cook for just a smidge. I'm going to do a half a cup of this. Have we gotten to a half a cup? Yeah, just about. We're going to add our half a cup. And we're going to put the lid on and let it simmer for a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some citric acid into what's left in our cup because that's going to hopefully attach to the wool 
um, and make it a little spotty when we put it in. So I'm adding mm, a yard of wool. Let's add two teaspoons. It's temperature, time. And it doesn't have to be at a rolling boil. A nice little simmer is terrific. It's looking good. Yes, I use my blue wet gloves so I don't get burned by hot water or hot steam. This is looking good. I think this is going to be a lovely antique black when it's done. If there's any citric acid in the bottom, you can dump this in. I'm actually going to add a little bit more citric acid so the whole thing sets. I'm just moving it all around, stirring it, making sure the citric acid goes everywhere. Looks good. And now we're just going to put the lid on and we're going to let it simmer for probably 15 to 20 minutes. So we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 